we are back, and who said you only could do it once? After all memories had been processed, it was time for more adventure. We found a 38 foot catamaran and Edel Helios, located in Martinique in the Caribbean. Bigger than Uhuru with more space for more crew. The previous owner, Rene, was kind enough to give me a helping hand. He didn't speak a word of English, so my non existent French started to get a lot better. Anyhow, we got some solar panels up and some new batteries in me. Looking back at it, I was just as optimistic as I am now. The boat needed some love and I had a couple of projects in mind. After two weeks in Martinique, the boat was good enough to sail, so we hoisted the sails and headed south. First up was Bekwe. I remember our first anchorage. We popped a beer and relaxed in the trampolines. And man, that nice feeling just hit me, telling me, you are back again, living the dream. It was only Karen was missing. But she would come later on. This time of the year, September, it was low season, so not a lot of people and boats around. Had the Jenacre fixed at the sail loft and then continued with the next stop in Tobago Case. We have to move on pretty quickly because one of the sail rides was troubling us. We went to Union Island and luckily found a mechanic who helped us. Tell me I'm water And you just keep drowning Days of thunder We say hello to Grenada, a bigger island with good grocery stores, boat chandleries and so on. We went to Grenada to haul out the boat for some bottom paint and other maintenance. Bad for us when there was a six weeks waiting to be hauled out. So, I called the boatyards in Trinidad and we got scheduled four days later. Only crave for solid ground. While in Trinidad, Shell's 50 years birthday showed up, so why not surprise him with some golf? Water had come between the gel coat and the blue rubberish carpet in the saloon and the cockpit, and blister had started to form, called osmosis. So all of the carpet was ripped out and hundreds of blisters were sanded down and the floor got then fared and painted. From have been just me and Shell on board, five new crew members arrived, among them my brother and Karen. It was way too crowded with seven people on board. But after a couple of weeks, three of the guys jump chipped for several reasons, and I'm glad for that. the boat we had first sailed south to Trinidad and then headed up north and back to Martinique again. And from there on we left on our longest sail so far to Los Roques, Venezuela, a 400 mile sail. But just before we left the mainsail ripped just below the third reef. So we had to sail with our third reef in our main. There's always a lot of discussion about to go or not to go here, because it's a Venezuela territory. There have been some pirate attacks and robberies closer to mainland, 
But around Las Rocas, lying around 80 nautical miles north, there's not been many reports. Here's some guy at the street, makes the best deal for you. Bank offered a rate 1 to 4, while the local guy offered a rate at 1 to 18. Here we also filled up with the cheapest diesel on the planet. We paid 5 US dollar for 100 liter or 27 gallons of diesel. Los Rocas really became a true favorite and this must be one of the nicest cruising grounds in the Caribbean. Beautiful islands, crystal clear water, cute towns with some restaurants and bars, and sandy streets. And you're almost always the only boat in the anchorage. I'm holding, but It's time to move on. Next, the ABC Islands. First, Bonaire for some scuba diving. And then Curaçao with this beautiful town, Willemstad. We got to Aruba just before Christmas and New Year, and of course, we needed to celebrate. Aruba is probably the most touristy and touristy dense place we've been to, but in a good way. Lots of nice restaurants and bars, super good grocery stores, chandleries, and everything else you can ask for as a cruiser. Not the place I would stay for a longer period, but a good place to rest and have fun. The new mainsail and lazy bag had now arrived and was all installed. Nothing stopped us to move on. In fact, we were a little bit stressed to be in time to pick up new crew in Panama a couple of weeks later. It might not have looked very bad on the forecast, a small dot with 30 knots of wind outside Colombia. But this area is very infamous of high waves and much wind. Some say it's one of the five toughest areas in the world to sail in. And this, this would become the worst we've ever experienced as sailors. The night came and the wind increased to 40 knots. Waves grew bigger and felt like mountains. We were surfing at a speed of 22 knots. Port engine stopped working during a failed attempt to reef. Cabin got filled with smoke because of the engine and got us very worried. A power outlet started to smoke and almost caught fire as well. The autopilot stopped working so we had to hand steer on the exposed helm with waves breaking over us, making us wet and cold. I started hallucinating, seeing rib boats. Fell asleep and woke up every 15 seconds while steering the boat. We started to experience big maneuvering problems and couldn't alter the course we wanted, and couldn't really understand why. We tried to slow the boat down by throwing in some lines and an old anchor. Lost two to three knots. Saloon floor had one inch of water, do no barrier from the cockpit. And with just half a mile to go, we almost ended up on the rocks when we got pushed sideways, but two fishermen saved us the last seconds when the depth meter was showing three feet. 
We had driven the boat before with only one engine, without any problems, so no brains could figure out what was going on this time. We dropped anchor, washed and flushed everything with water and did a good clean on the boat. We then headed into shore and had a dinner and beer that tasted so good. Just to check if there was anything stuck in the propeller, I jumped into that super filthy water in Cartagena. With a visibility of 1 feet, I managed to get to the propeller and it all looked good. to San Blas, Panama in time to pick up our crew, my brother's girlfriend. He and the French guy headed towards Panama City. In the meantime, we had work to do on the boat. One was to clean the bottom. It didn't take many seconds before I got up from the water again. Starboard rudder was missing. Starboard rudder was missing. No wonder we've had maneuvering problems. This wasn't anything we could fix right away, and we were expecting crew to join. And have we made this far? Then it should be alright, if there isn't too bloody wind. A week later, me and my brother's parents arrived, so it was a full boat again. We cruised around among the San Blas Islands, or Gunayala which is also called. The people living on these islands are the Guna Indians, one of the shortest people on earth. Thanks San Blas for its beautiful cruising among the 350 small palm-covered islands and then continue with some stops along Panama's coast like Isla Grande, Portobello, Isla Linton and Rio Chagres. had passed and it was time for the parents to fly home. We needed to haul out to get a new rudder and do other maintenance and fixes on the boat. In the next episode we transit the Panama Canal and start our second crossing over the biggest ocean in the world, the Pacific. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here.